So let's now look at um, ways in which we could potentially uh, move forward. And I'm, I'm using a concept which is uh, quite good conceptually to allow us to get a, a grasp of things, a grasp of things uh, due to uh, our circle of from, from Princeton. So we start with basically uh, the uh, current and past uh, historical trends in terms of emissions, okay, uh, standing at about 1.9 uh, billion of tons of, of carbon per year in 1955, and culminating at about seven or so in, in 2007. So that's where we're. We take into account the demand from developing countries, and particularly the rising giants. This is where we might <coughs> potentially be in 50 years. Okay? I set as a target, uh, I'm not going to be as radical as Mondial and say we need to cut by 90%, but set as a target to remain flat for 50 years. Okay? And the hope is that this will give us a bit of a breather, and if we're safe and sound, and if nothing catastrophic has happened by 2057, we should by then have uh, had time to uh, mainstream and start deploying a whole array of new generation technologies that will work towards much, much longer term sustainability. So the focus here is what do we do in the next 50 years to be able to address the issue. And what you have to do is really basically somehow make up or knock off that triangle of increased CO2 and, CO2 CO2 and, and carbon emissions over the, the, the next 50 years, okay? Essentially, this is based on uh, an average growth of demand of about 1.4%, which is slightly optimistic. Some people expect that it's more going to be more like 2% uh, in the most optimistic scenario, but details. Okay. So, what do we do with this? Now, what can be done is essentially to say, okay, let's apply the old adage of divide and conquer. Okay? Dealing with uh, a 7 billion ton wedge is too overwhelming. I can't do it. I just give up. Okay? Watch TV and wait to see what happens. <laughs> I divide it in seven wedges, okay, and now what we can say is, okay, let's look in our whole array of available technologies today that have either been demonstrated or that, that are on the point of being demonstrated, technologies where we know there are really no big, big uh, hurdles. Okay, what can we do in terms of applying each one of these to try to attain a one billion, one gigaton uh, reduction in emissions over 50 years. And then, if we achieve that, then when we arrive at 2057, uh, some of the younger people in the audience and our children and so on will find brilliant ways of starting to come down the hill. Okay? So what are the possibilities? So the objective, I'm, I'm going to assume that we're going to be able to make it for 50 years if we just maintain things as they are. The objective is to prevent growth in CO2 emissions. And the options you have is really the first one is to reduce increase energy demand. Okay? This can be done two ways. It's by introducing more energy efficient technology. Okay? So you can have the same service for less amount of, 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 uh, of energy. Okay, you can travel the same distance for a less amount of energy, you can do a certain number of things. So that, that's what's referred to as energy efficiency. Okay? But there is another side to energy efficiency, if I have time, I'll, I'll talk about it. The second thing is to curb demand, okay? is to say people, no, you, you don't really need an automated lawnmower machine. Okay? Uh, you can live without that and it's not going to have a radical impact on your quality of uh, so that's sort of an area where you have to act more on the policy front. The other thing you can do is substitute current fuels with zero or lower 
carbon cubes. Okay? And that's essentially, in, in, in a way, the path towards decarbonization. Uh, when you're using methane as opposed to coal, you're already some way down there. Okay? But there are constraints and limitations, and we have to be aware. And then the third thing, which is inescapable, because these two together, there is, uh, I don't think it's realistic to ex expect that uh, we'd be able to really have, uh, have, have as, as big an impact as, as we'd like with these, no matter what the policies and the economics and, and the investments and the will are. The third and inescapable option is to capture the CO2 that we're producing at various sources and uh, store it or suppress it. And there is a variety of technologies available to that. And